So moving on to software licensing. Now so far we have been looking at the different categories of software that come under application software and we have and we learned that each category of software offers a specific task for the user. So we learned for example if you talk about uh, word processing software you can use it to type, you can use it to create letters, documents, okay and if, for example if you want to do calculations your best option would be to go for spreadsheet software. Then we learn, for example, if you want to manage a project, the best type of software you can use is project management software. Now what we are going to be learning is something known as software licensing. Software licensing basically means what are your rights in using the software, okay? Have you purchased the software in a legal manner? That's what you call software licensing. So sometimes users require a software license to be able to install and use software on a computer. There are many types of software licenses, license, and the details of software licensing are complicated. The main three types of software license available are free, open source, and proprietary. Now, in order, now certain softwares without a license also you can install it on your computer. But certain softwares, if you are going to install it, you have to have a license. A license proves that you have purchased the software in a legal way. Now. Using software without a required or a valid license is known as software piracy. Software distributed without the right to do so is called pirate software or pirated software. Okay, this is something legal. Using software without a license, without a valid license is actually something legal and it is known as software piracy. So, we are looking at the three types of software licensing. One is free, the second is open source, and the third is proprietary. Each of these categories will give the users different levels of rights. Let's see what is the first one all about. So when it comes to free software, this license gives the user the right to study, modify, copy, or distribute a program. The software can be distributed free of charge or for a fee. The word free, this word free, refers to the user's freedom to change whatever they want because there are no restrictions on the use of the software. So when, the, when a particular software is having a free software license, it means the user can study the software, he can modify the software, he can copy the software and he can even distribute the software. And even if he wants, he can distribute it for a fee, for a financial amount, he can distribute it. Okay, so what we need to understand understand is when it comes to free software, it does not mean that the software is financially free. It does not mean if you want to buy the software, it is financially free. No. The word free refers to the user's freedom in doing whatever he wants with the software. Okay. So when it comes to free software, you may have to pay for it and buy it. But once you buy it, you are free to do whatever you like with the software. Okay. That is what we call free software licensing. Then the second type is something known as open source. Open source is one better than free software. What does it do? It also gives you the source code. Source code is basically the files that were used to create the software. So when you have the files that were used to create the software, it becomes even easier for you to modify the software according to your own requirements. Okay. So this license makes the source code available to users so that they can modify how the software works or distribute the modified or unmodified software. Okay, so open source is even better than free software license. In this, the source code is also provided to you. And then finally, we have proprietary software. Now, when it comes to proprietary software licensing, it is quite strict. Okay, it is marketed and distributed by its owner under a brand name. The software owner can decide the fee for the software and whether or not the software should be distributed. Okay, so when it comes to a proprietary software license, there are many uh, regulations to be obeyed. Okay, normally the software owner will have a lot of regulations that the users will have to obey. And when it comes to proprietary software, sometimes you may have to pay for it, sometimes it might be free. But remember, when the license is proprietary, there are many rules for you to obey. Then moving on to software updates or of you must be familiar with this term if you use your mobile phone if you use a laptop even regularly you will notice your laptop operating system is updating and if you use your mobile phone you will notice that regularly your apps or your applications on your mobile phone regularly update so why do software why do apps and operating systems and all that why do they update they update for the following reasons one is to fix security vulnerabilities or bugs okay so if there is any security issue in your 
app, the app will automatically update to fix that security problem. What does bug mean? A bug means there is a small issue in that software. Softwares are usually made using codes, no? so if there is a small problem in that code, we call it a bug. So to fix those problems, sometimes you will be required to update your software. Then increasing compatibility with newer operating system. So when you upgrade your operating system from Windows 8, when you upgrade to Windows 10, automatically all the apps in your, all the softwares in your laptop also have to be updated. Okay. So for example, if you are using Android or for example, if you are using iOS, from iOS 10, when you update to iOS 11, automatically all the apps in your mobile phone also have to be updated so that they will be compatible with the new operating system. Another reason is to improve performance and efficiency. Another one is to introduce new features. So when there are new features coming out in a particular app, you will be required to update your app. And then improving usability. Improving usability means improving the user interface, making it more user friendly for you. So these are five reasons given on why software updates have to be done. Then this is something which is not there in your textbook, but is just something you need to know. The difference between the word general purpose software and specific purpose software. So general purpose is also known as off-the-shelf software. It is developed keeping in mind the requirements of the general public. Okay, this software is made for everyone to use. Okay, and this software can be downloaded off the internet or purchased from a store. So these are a few examples given to you. On the other hand, we have something known as specific purpose software. This is, or it's also referred to as bespoke software. This is software which is developed for a particular individual or for a particular organization. So, for example, a banking software. So, one bank will have a software developed only for their bank. And they will not want this software used by any other bank. Okay, so that's what you call specific purpose software. Software which is developed only for one particular organization, only for one particular individual. Okay, general purpose is software which is made for everyone to use, while specific purpose software is software made only for one particular organization or individual to use. It. So that's it for chapter number two. Chapter number two is uh, chapter number two is all about software. Okay, so please make sure you uh, complete question number fourteen all the way to question number uh, sixteen. And then once you are done with it, please do save your work and upload this uh, document back into the classroom so that I can check it and get back to you if there are any issues. Thank you very much.